I'm going to talk about what kind of vocabulary SESTA uses and about the platform requirements and the tools currently in use only if not a not lot of slides about those. So SESTA uses the vocabularies to, to harmonize metadata because there are many organizations that are produ producing metadata and to improve the quality of the metadata and, and general understandability. If, if, you, if you name the things in the same manner, it, it, it increases understandability. And of course, to increase the findability. And if search interfaces uses the control vocabularies in filters to, to allow users to restrict their searches according to certain parameters, so the relevance of the search results increases. Yes, in general, SESTA uses uh, two subject vocabularies. There's a thesaurus, which is larger, the 3,500 concept, and then the SESTA topic classification, which is a very much broader categorization of, of topics, uh, about 100 terms, concepts. And then there are vocabularies that provide a the descriptions of, of research methods. Even these are broad categorizations of the methods, not the very specific, but this help to, to, to understand what kind of methods had been used to create research data set. And, and these are mostly pro created by DDI Alliance because SESTA uses the DDI data documentation standard. So DDI Alliance has created the English, English concepts uh, which had been translated by SESTA members or associated organizations um, up to 11 different languages. So some examples like mode of collection, unit of analysis, that was also in Slava's example, sampling procedure. And then there are some vocabularies that are used for practical purposes. Like for example, the SESTA data catalog is, is harvesting metadata from, from different organizations. Um, and these organizations who publish the metadata are called publishers. And there, there's a, a filter in the data catalog for them. And we notice that using using metadata for this filter, it, it gets quite messy because of the typos and the user interface is only in English, but the metadata can be in any language. So the names can be in any language organization names and organization names may have, might have changed over time. So what we did actually, we, we had the, all the organization names in English and attached each of them to, to an endpoint. So we cleaned the publisher field that way. And, and other like persistent identifiers just decided that um, th there are four different types of persistent identifiers that SESTA would like organizations to use. So this CV is mainly to tell people that when they give in metadata the type of PID used, how, how to, so that they give the type in a similar manner. And like oh, we already heard a lot today about platform requirements. So for SESTA, it's important to have the uh, access roles governed uh, so access governed by roles and by agency and by language. So you can have a role translating SESTA, DDI vocabularies in German, into German. And of course, nowadays online access and sim simultaneous users in, from different locations and all, all the normal uh, vocabulary management function and, and, but some also some validity checks. So before you publish the, so, so you don't, yes, checks of content. And then the publication and discovery platform and exports and download in required formats. And about the information needs, of course, the, the concepts and definitions of concept uh, in different languages, hierarchy of concepts, and then for the thesaurus, the thesaurus, ELST also uses related concepts and multilingual synonyms and, and different types of different types of notes. 
and uh, but the DDI vocabularies uh, they they have also code value, which is the identifier that that is used across languages, but it's actually not a stable concept identifier, so it's not not a PID. So the, this information content also needs to be in the in the system. And then and a new uh, requirement that has recently been expressed is that once SESTA has organizations that produce metadata from, from a great variety of, of disciplines, that it would be beneficial to have a, a broader control vocabulary, but then within the control vocabulary have certain concepts that are specific to a certain research domain and other concepts that are only uh, specific to another research domain. So this is one of the new requirements. And then about the, about the version history, um, when, when uh, it, it's for the tools, it's important to, to be able to somehow produce a clear and human readable version history um, and preferably specified by language. And this, this is because of the, of the metadata requirements. So if the purpose is to harmonize metadata and increase findability in this way, but the danger is that if there's no human readable and clear version history, the, the organizations will be much less interested to update their legacy metadata if there's a change in, in the vocabulary. Uh, and this would lead to one of the main purposes of, of using the control vocabularies being, being a bit jeopardized. And the other one is that if, if you have vocabularies and then you have the uh, different language versions of them, so of the concept. So of course the, the translation organizations need to know what has been changed so that they know what they need to change or update or translate. So as, um, as already mentioned, the ELS thesaurus uses Vogpens 3 as the editor and Cosmos for publication platform and, and for API. And ELS was previously on another platform, but this new combination will be launched on 16th November. And there's the link. And then the other vocabularies are in the SESTA vocabulary service, which is both as an editor and publication platform. And then from technical, it's a normal SCOS support. The Thesaurus requires more SCOS features than the other ones. And of course, versioned APIs. And then there are other software requirements requ relating to software quality and maturity. And there's a link to them. So that was basically what I had.